cleansed. What's up, Toronto? It's good to be back here. So let, let me start this off by thanking you, first of all. Gate, $7.6 million US. 18,100 sold out. Highest grossing arena gate in history and the highest gate ever uh, at the, for Canada in an arena. Thank you, Canada. Who's got the first question? This is a question for the champion, Sean Strickland. Sean, you know, you said a lot of things about Canada, but coming here to that ovation, what does it feel like to be a, a hero to these people? You know, man, now nah, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you guys something. And this is what the media doesn't understand when it comes to me and you guys and Australian fans. Let me tell you guys something. You guys don't care about me fighting. Yeah, me and Drykus, we're gonna have a death match. Someone's gonna get their hand raised. Someone's gonna get their hand raised. But when have you ever seen a UFC champion, George St. Pierre, or anybody else stick up for you guys? I do it. I do it. I am not chasing the Chinese check mark of Nike. I don't give a f about that. I care about you guys. I care about you guys being free. I care about you guys having freedom of speech. I give a f about you guys. And I'll tell you what, you guys are fucking awesome and I cannot wait for me and this man to fucking go to war for you fucking guys. Let's go. Let's talk about that fight, Sean. You just mentioned going to war. Your last fight, you put on an amazing performance over Israel. Do you think you can do the same thing against Drinkers, or is this going to turn into a war because of his style? Hey, hey, here's the thing about Drykus, you guys. He ain't fucking titty, is he? Drykus likes to fight. He likes to fight, and he's a hell of a fight. You know what that means? We're going to be dick to dick, nipple to nipple in that fucking range, fucking fighting, bro. And I hope... I hope after we're done, I hope after we're done, win or lose, we're fucking bloody, and we put on a show for you fucking guys. Because Sean's style of striking has been, got a lot of applause, it's his Philly shell. Do you think you can beat him on the feet, or do you have to turn this into a full MMA fight? Hey, no, no, hey. Everybody, everybody, calm down. This man's a fucking warrior. We're gonna, hey, we're gonna fucking fight. Hard for you fucking guys. And pl applaud him and encourage him because we won a fucking war. Damn, Canada, your booze suck way worse than Vegas booze, I have to tell you that. You have to get a lot louder than that. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. There we go. Now you can almost compete. Now you can almost compete. But to answer your question, listen. This is a fight where anybody who knows fighting knows this fight will be one hell of a fight. Is this fight going the distance? Probably not. Sean Strickland has a, has a style of going forward. In his last couple of fights, we saw him not only jab and throwing a one-two, we saw him putting pressure on. I'm a guy that goes forward, I don't fight backwards. All my fights are finishes. This is gonna be one hell of a fight. And like you said, no matter where you look at it, you're getting the show you're paying for, and that's all I'm here for. Because Sean has made it clear that being a champion isn't really his motivation, while you have said that that is exactly what you want. Do you think that difference in attitude will make a difference in the fight on Saturday? I didn't hear a word, sorry. I said, Sean has made it clear being a champion doesn't, isn't what motivates him, but for you, it is exactly what motivates you. Do you think that difference in attitude will play a factor in the fight at all? Yeah, I mean, the way we, the way we uh, go into the fight, Everybody has their different motivations. Some people fight for the fun of it. Some people uh, do it for titles. Some do it for money. I'm there to be the best in the world, and that's why I'm going out there Saturday night. Who's got the next question? Right here, next one. A question for Raquel. Outside, outside of Ronda Rousey, you've pretty much fought every Bantamweight champion out there. So I'm curious, when you break down Myra's skill set, does she present anything in the octagon that you haven't seen before? What's up, guys? You know
know, for me, I'm going to say she's tough, right? She's done exactly what she needed to to get into the UFC and everything else. But my thing is, who have you fought? I've been in the UFC for 10 years, and in that time, I've spent majority of that in the top 10. I fought in the best of the best. I fought in all the former champions. Um, you know, I, I know she's going to bring a fight. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know. I just, I'm confident in every area. Question for Myra in the back right here. Uh, yesterday, you said that maybe on paper fans weren't excited for this fight because they want to see you fight Juliana. Raquel seemed to take issue with that and said the only reason they want to see that fight is because you guys yap a lot. So I'm curious, what's your response to that? Ontem você falou, Maira, que no papel essa luta talvez não era tão interessante que o pessoal queria ver você lutando contra a, contra a, a Juliana. A Raquel não gostou muito disso e falou algumas coisas. E agora, você acha que de repente criou um clima para criar uma luta? É. I think only belt this girl will have is the UNO belt. This belt is my belt. She will to talk what you want to do. I will win. Question for Neil Magny and Chris Curtis. I'll start with Neil. Back right here. All the way right here in the back, right here. Hi, bad. What's up? I'll start. I'll start with you, Chris. Uh, you fought a lot. You've been fighting for almost longer than anyone up here on on stage. So I'm curious when you get a reception where you're fighting a fan favorite, is this an environment that you like to and thrive in? Yeah, man, uh, starting out, I made my career beating up hometown guys. But there's nothing better than uh, when he goes to sleep, and the, there's like a moment when he goes to sleep, the crowd stops trying to figure out if it's real. Like, he'll get up, right? Like he's not getting up, it's over. So I've done this for 15 years. I'll do it for however long more I can. Uh, Regardless, man, he's a hometown guy. I love Canada. I fought here so many times. Like, I shit you not, guys. I've said a thousand times for the last five, six years. I was number one ranked guy in Canada for like seven years, oddly enough. But I consider this my backyard, man. This is my home away from home. Canada's always been good to me. I've never had anything but love here. I just want to fight for you guys. So I, I don't blame you guys for backing them. Back your boy. I respect you. You know, I respect you for doing it. You back your own, but uh, I'm going to put on a fight for you regardless. Similar question for Neil. You fought Argentinians in Argentina. You fought Irishmen in Boston. You fought Brazilians in Brazil. So is this an environment that you thrive in, having to fight the hometown boy here in Toronto? Yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I'm just not on a mission. You send me anywhere uh, in this world, I find me to get job done. So uh, come out here to Canada, going to overseas, wherever you send me, I find me to get done. Finally, uh, questions for both Mike and Mark Andre. Uh, Mike, I'll start with you. Obviously, you're the you're the Toronto favorite here. Is there a message you have to the crowd here that they're all tuning in to watch you? And I don't know what the hell you just said. I love you guys, man. Thank you guys for coming out. I want to make you guys proud. I want to represent you guys well. I want you to turn on it, turn on the TV, watch me fight, and say that's our boy. I, he represents us well. I'm so fucking proud to be representing us. I can't wait to get to Scotiabank Arena. I've been living here my whole life. I lived down the street. It's been the ACC for me my whole life. I grew up going to this arena. I love this city, man. I've made a career out of finishing guys, and I'm going to keep that going on Saturday night. That answered the question. Similar question for Mark Andre. What does it mean to be fighting here in Canada again? All right, who's got the next question? Go ahead. Uh, for Myra and Raquel, this is just the second fight in the history of this division for a title fight that hasn't had Ronda Rousey or Amanda Nunes. Uh, when you go into this and you think about what kind of title reign do you have, do you feel like there's a certain standard and expectation you have to meet? Essa é a primeira luta, nessa, essa é a segunda vez nessa divisão que, uma, que vai ser uma disputa de título que não envolve nem a Ronda Rousey, nem a Amanda Nunes. Você acha que por conta disso, por conta do padrão que aquelas da, da excelência tem que manter um padrão bem alto? Of course, uh, I think I'm ready for this level, but I don't know if she have my level. What you say? Speak English. Que I can hear you. O que você falou para ela? Ela falou. I told you, I I'm ready for this level, but I don't know if se Raquel have this level. Still can't understand you. 
The only expectation that I have is to go out there and be the best version of myself. At the end of the day, when I make up my mind, it's game over. So I can care less about that. There's no other expectation from anywhere. It's just being me. Raquel, when you fight, everybody's sleeping. Everybody's sleeping when you fight. Everybody's sleeping? Really? You're sitting here running your mouth talking all this shit, but tell me who you fought. I never finished one who fight. You fought? I never finished what one fight. Because you know when you fight, I'm asleep, everybody's sleep. You don't spend sleep, so much everybody's time. sleep. You so much time, but guess what? My fists are gonna do You don't have Saturday. a level. You don't Keep have talking. a UFC level. Keep talking. You don't have a UFC level. Oh, I don't have it? All right, we'll see. Go ahead. For uh, Sean and Drickus. Uh, we know what happened last month in Las Vegas with the press conference and the crowd and everything, but this week you guys have been very cordial, you're hugging on Embedded, Drickus said he wants to have a beer after the fight. Is this no longer personal? Here, Is it just about the Here's the thing, now? it was never fucking personal. You had the cuck Sean O'Malley say some stupid shit he knows nothing about. I go hard on everybody, you guys. You don't think I deserve a little shit, bro? I go hard on all you motherfuckers. I, I'm, I'm proud of the motherfucker. You don't see me lose character often. This motherfucker got me there. No fucking A, goddamn, let's go. Let's go, dog. Let's fucking go. Let's go. Yeah. My man. Hey, you guys. Hey. Hey, you guys, though, real talk, real talk. Let's go, fucking savage. Real talk though, you guys. Me and Drykus, we're gonna try to fucking kill each other for you guys. Drykus, can I get an agreement? To the fucking death. To the fucking death. Yes! Goddamn respect him for that. All right, what, what's the next question? Uh, this is madness. Have anything to say to that answer though? No. What's the question? No, I was just asking if Drykus had anything to say, but one, one for you, Dana, actually. Dana, uh, there's no main event for UFC 300 right now. Are you monitoring this fight between Drykus and Sean? And if they're healthy, if they're available, could they make it? I'm not even thinking about 300 right now. I'm just trying to get through the next 15 minutes here. Thank you. Go ahead. What do you got, sir? Thank you. Keith Whittier with Ottawa Life Magazine. Starting off with Drakus, there seems to be this mentality that if the fight goes long, then you're not going to be able to keep up with the cardio of Sean Strickland. Are people sleeping on your stamina? Well, I have one fight in my whole career that win the decision. How did that go? Lost the first round, won both second and third, and that happens to be a teammate of Sean Strickland. So, yeah, I uh, hope that answers the question. Okay, thank you. Question for Sean. Champ. Now, you've said before that you've got very good wrestling, but you haven't always had a chance to, to showcase it. Is that something that you're hoping to do this weekend? Listen, man. Listen, you guys. I wrestle every day, sadly. Well, let's, let's treat this like fucking men. Stand in the middle and put one of us to fucking sleep. We don't need to fucking wrestle. I ain't fucking Khabib. We're here to fucking fight. There. One more question for Sean, if I can. You can, Sean, bro. Last, last month at the press conference, you had a lot of nice things to say about Leon Edwards in, in defense of the comments from Colby Covington. Have you had the chance to talk with Leon since then? No. Yeah, hey, listen, guys. Colby Covington is a fucking fraud. He don't give a fuck. He don't give a fuck about anybody besides himself, man. I'll tell you what, dude, he is a fucking shame. It's a shame. It's a fucking damn shame that he fucking is even in that octagon talking his shit. He is a fucking coward. And I'm happy that Leon came out and represented. Yes, fucking go. Yes. Let's fucking go. Quick question for Dana. Dana. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dana. Obviously, huge reception here in Canada. How many more times is the UFC planning to come to Canada in 2024? Yeah. Yeah, we've been waiting to get back to Toronto for a long time. We're gonna cruise all over Canada here now. It's good to be back up here. We love this place. You guys are some of the best fans of all time. Thank you. I'm gonna take one more question. What's your question? Arnold, hey Arnold, how's it going? Uh, question for you, mate. Obviously, Mosa Evloev is undefeated, 17-0. and 0. 
with Max going up for the BMF tile fight and lightweight with Justin Gaethje. Do you feel like a win over him can get you right into tile contention? What the fuck is going on in here? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, a win over Mosla definitely puts me back up there with the big boys, you know. He's a tough, undefeated guy. Not a lot of people want to fight him. I want to be the best in the world, so I'm happy to fight the best guys in the world, too. And a question for Sean and Drakus. Um, Israel Adesanya has given his prediction for this fight. He's picking Drakus to win by submission. I'm wondering what your thoughts are about Izzy's prediction. Israel here. Adesanya is irrelevant right now. That man went on holiday and let him stay there. Go on. Listen, listen, Izzy, the fucking guy, the fucking cringe lord, the pup play himself. Fuck Izzy. Fucking. I could have took Izzy down and beat his ass on the ground, but I chose to stand with him like a man. What did he do the whole fight? Run away like a bitch. Izzy, shut your fucking mouth. And final question for Sean and Drykus. We have Alex Pereira sitting here in the front row. Whoever wins yeah. out of you two, would you be interested in moving up to light heavyweight at some point and challenging him? 100%. 100% after this, I have a whole division to take care of before I start thinking of that. I'm yeah. taking care of that division. And whoever has to, whether it's him, whether it's somebody else, I don't care. After this division, that's the one I'm after. Alex, after I put him away, you can put him away next. Don't worry, we got you, Dreyfus. Canada, thank you guys very much. I'm going to square these guys off for photo ops. We'll see you at the weigh-in.